Hi, everybody. Welcome to Attaché Wine, your personal wine attaché, or your personal wine ambassador, bringing you wine recommendations, wine education, and even some dinnertainment, which is the art of uh, great hospitality, throwing a great dinner party. Um, I think you're going to enjoy uh, following me on Instagram. Uh, if you're not already, it's at Attaché Wine. Uh, love to have you. Very interested in the community. So please comment. Uh, let me know what you're looking to learn, look to, uh, what you like, what you didn't like. Um, you can DM me as well, and I'll uh, promise to get back to you. Um, you know, I know a lot of us uh, are going through maybe a little bit of tough time, either lost a job or um, a, a family member might be sick. So uh, wine can make you feel a lot better. It can really lift your spirit. So I kind of want to um, bring my expertise to the table and help people select great wines, maybe help demystify wine if um, you think it's a little bit intimidating. Um, this is meant to be fun. Um, and you know, so, uh, you know, your spirit's going to be a lot lifted if you can get a great bang for your buck and find some great value out there. So I'm hoping to help in that way too. Um, awesome. So this is the inaugural episode of What is Nick Drinking? Um, you know, I enjoy wine most nights, so, and I'm usually sharing them on Facebook or Instagram, so I'd love to, you know, kind of go live in this video and, and take you through how I examine the wines and, and taste a few wines with you guys. Um, today's wine, Two Hands, Gnarly Dudes, that's the name of the wine, it's named for these gnarly vines of Shiraz right here that you can see. Uh, 2018 vintage from Barossa Valley, um, grape being Shiraz, which I mentioned before, Syrah, same grape. Uh, in Australia, they call it Shiraz. In France, they call it Syrah. In the U.S., kind of call it whatever the heck they want um, in true American fashion. Um, but you really don't see Shiraz on American wine uh, much anymore. Um, reason being, uh, in the early 2000s, and I, I kind of include this in the post about Clarendon Hills, uh, if you want to look back um, about that wine, incredible wine, um, single vineyard wine from Australia, uh, there was a whole critter phase and Australian wine, you know, like yellowtail, little penguin, things like that just got huge. Right. Um, and production went way up and quality went way down. A lot of the wine we were getting over in the States wasn't the highest quality wine from Australia. Producers like Clarendon Hills and Two Hands, uh, they were been around since the nineties. They stayed true to lower production and quality and really didn't focus as much on the American market. And so now you can, those wines are coming back in a really big way and at a tremendous uh, value. So, you know, you can get like rich full-bodied wines and uh, a lot of like well-made balanced wines from Australia, and they're gonna be less expensive than equal quality from Bordeaux or from Napa Valley. Um, so th I think you're gonna really, uh, that's the big takeaway. <laughs> Go to the Australian section, maybe spend a little bit more money, um, 20 to 30 bucks, and you're just gonna get this rich, full-bodied, complex wine. Um, so let's get into the wine. I'm thirsty, I'm ready to taste this thing. I'm looking at it, I mean, it's so dark. I'm getting this like rich purple core, um, typical of Shiraz, um, really bright like magenta uh, rim as a secondary flavor, secondary, uh, hue. Um, when I see wine this dark, I'm thinking darker fruit, I'm thinking fuller bodied, I'm thinking riper fruit. Um, not always true, but it's a good indicator. Mm. Smelling the wine, I'm getting a just that mixed berry, like blue, black, and red fruit. Uh, not easy to accomplish in the wine. Um, Syrah, Shiraz really gives that. Um, in warmer climates, it's more blue and more black. Um, just think about the color of the fruits, blueberry, blue, blackberry, black, black plum, black cherry, um, and then red fruits being strawberry, cherry, um, raspberry, things like that. Barossa Valley is a really like hot region, so you definitely get like ripe to overripe fruit. I'm not going to go full jammy, and I think that's, uh, can, you can find that a lot in Barossa Valley, but this producer produces more of a European style. They're going for higher acid. They're going for lower alcohol. And it really shows in the wine. Um, very balanced, not overripe, no bitter phenolic. But I do get, um, once I kind of shake it up and I'm looking past that, that beautiful bouquet of fruit, the oak's really coming out. They do use French oak on the wine. Uh, it's very subtle. Again, a lot of Barossa producers 
oaking the crap out of these wines and it covers up this beautiful fruit that they could have. Uh, maybe it's covering up some of the flaws from, from making the wine, uh, from getting the alcohol too high and having some, you know, maybe pressing the wine too much and making it bitter. Um, cinnamon, chocolate, brown sugar. Mm, just a little bit of like bready quality. The blackberry is like screaming on this wine. And the acidity is making me salivate like crazy. That's a sign of a really balanced wine. It's gonna be great with food. Um, nice long finish. I'm kind of chewing it up and I'm getting some of that mocha flavor. Um, Syrah is really uh, the tertiary character of black olive, sage, thyme. Those are all there. This is a super varietally correct wine um, for not a ton of money. Um, I see this being incredible with kind of like gamey meats, your, your lamb, um, your turkey. Um, if I had a riper style of something else from Barossa, I think it would be a perfect barbecue mm. wine. Um, but this one's really restrained. And so I would go with that lamb, kind of that gamey meat, maybe veal, um, and incorporate olive into the dish. You can't go wrong. So, wow. You're getting smoked meat on the wine. So, I mean, if you're if you're barbecuing and, and smoking some meat, this is gonna go perfectly with it. I wouldn't add the barbecue sauce. I think that would be a little too sweet, a little too rich with this wine. So maybe just more of a pure smoked meat with more of a savory kind of um, a garnish or uh, accoutrement on the dish. So here's the important part. If you love this wine, if you love what I said and you want to go buy it, uh, looks like it's on wine.com for $32.99. Um, and Wine Searcher says that's about the average price. So if you're getting a few wines from there, can't go wrong. Um, the Vino, if you like that app, that's a great app. You can order wines through that. Um, $29.99, so even better. <laughs> but it looks like it ships from Virginia. So if you're ordering a bunch of wine from there, it might make sense. Um, but if you're just gonna get one bottle, happen to live in Colorado, Applejack has a wine for $32.99. Um, I think this wine is well worth that price. Um, if that's a little too expensive, you wanna save a little bit, um, the Angel Share is another wine from Two Hands uh, for $27.99, and it's on sale, it's a great deal. And that's, uh, it's McLaren Vale, so it's a little cooler climate. So it's gonna have even more acidity, more herbal character. Fruit's gonna be a little more ripe, whereas this had that overripe kind of tendency and, um, I said towing into jammy, but not quite there. Um, yeah, average score on Wine Searcher, 90 points. I, I agree. I think this wine is incredibly balanced. They've showcased that they know how to make wine. Um, it's a, still a family-owned estate, and um, I love the winemaker, and another uh, owner is actually a Denver resident. So uh, if you live in Denver, support local and, and buy some of Tim's wine. Um, awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's incredible wine, the first wine, the inaugural wine, Two Hands, uh, Barossa Valley Shiraz, 2018, The Gnarly Dudes. Hope you enjoy.